There's this amino acid, sarcosine, that starves your cells to make your muscle cells grow. Now, I get it. You hear the word starve and you think, how in the world can we not give our cells what they need and yet they'll grow? And it's especially confusing when it's in people dealing with sarcopenia, a condition characterized by muscle weakness and reduced muscle size, like we're all prone to experience with age if we're not careful. Well, it might seem counterintuitive, but this particular amino acid works through strange ways. I just mentioned how sarcopenia is a problem as we age because it's characterized by low muscle mass, reduced muscle strength and power, as well as increased overall frailty of the body. And we know that people suffering from sarcopenia have low sarcosine levels. The orange condition is the sarcosine levels in the sarcopenic individuals. So this study aimed to find out not only what can be done, but if supporting sarcosine levels in the body might reverse signs of sarcopenia. Because of the time scale of sarcopenia occurring over many years, the researchers used old mice and fed them sarcosine to see if it had any effect whatsoever. They ended up showing that sarcosine does increase muscle mass, implicating sarcosine deficiency directly as being a factor of severe muscle loss with aging. Now, while that's interesting, what if I told you that sarcosine wasn't acting on the muscle itself? At least not here. In fact, sarcosine on the face of it massively increases the inflammation inside the tissues of the body, like fat tissue and muscle tissue. So think of immune cells infiltrating between the cells that make up those tissues. Doesn't sound too good, does it? So why are they suddenly having a block party in your body? Well, immune cells being in an area are like police officers in an area. They could be in a pro-inflammatory state, like an officer in an arrest mindset, or an anti-inflammatory state, like an officer in a support mindset. They both serve a function, but they have vastly different effects on the surrounding area. In this case, fat tissue or the block party. In this case, the immune cells are in an anti-inflammatory state. So, the main points are so far that sarcosine levels are low in sarcopenia, a muscle loss disorder that occurs with age, at least in part. But supplementing with sarcosine improves muscle size. But it also leads to an infiltration of immune cells into the tissues of the body for, as of yet, unknown reasons, except we know that they're in an anti-inflammatory state. Then why are they amassing specifically when sarcosine is given? That's because sarcosine enters the immune cells and starves them in a specific manner, which is why we talked about starvation earlier. Sarcosine enters the cells, then reduces the concentration of specific amino acids. It does that through interfering with the immune cell's ability to uptake amino acids. That deficiency gets sensed inside the macrophage, the immune cell, and it drives an anti-inflammatory signaling cascade within the cell. All right, but how does that impact the muscles of the body? Well, in sarcopenia and with aging as a whole, there can be enhanced inflammation. The immune system is more activated, doing more damage, wreaking havoc. The muscle cells are constantly bombarded by insults. You're ugly. My 96-year-old grandma can outlift you. You call that a muscle? Emotionally and importantly, physically. Now, if sarcosine is able to create more anti-inflammatory environment close to the tissue, it might be able to lessen the noise, at least on the physical insults. It may not really be able to do much about the emotional ones. And, in fact, the researchers used a muscle injury model to show that when sarcosine is supplemented, there is less muscle cell death and faster muscle regeneration. Muscle regeneration seen here. The vertical axis is the muscle regeneration area, so initially it's greater and later on it leads to much smaller areas of regeneration necessary because, this is in conjunction with other data, indicates sarcosine speeds up the muscle recovery. Now, that's all possible because of the anti-inflammatory immune cells rush into the musculature just like they do with the fat tissue and reduce inflammation, thereby reducing the additional damage, but also fostering a healing environment. Let me quick interject my opinion here. I'm not a fan of this model, simply because I don't think that using a muscle injury model is all that representative of a sarcopenia. It seems more representative of muscle dystrophy or an actual injury. 
That doesn't negate the impact that sarcosine has, and it clearly would still benefit the body in sarcopenia, but I don't like the model used to make that connection. Still, the main point here is that sarcosine enters the immune cells, reduces other amino acids from being taken up by the immune cells, which turns them to an anti-inflammatory state. Once in that state, they help the body, fat and muscle tissue, be less inflammatory, but also recover and regenerate more quickly. Now, knowing all that, how can we apply this? Well, if you've ever been interested in learning how sarcosine affects the fat, tissue and the liver, or exactly how sarcosine selectively starves the immune cells, or even how it directly influences muscle regeneration and some alternative supplements to combat sarcopenia, check out the extended version of this video that you're watching. It covers all of that plus more. And you'll get all these goodies included, all available as a Physionic Insider member. The link to join is in the description. I hope to see you there. So, we know there is an association between significantly reduced muscle mass and function with age and low sarcosine levels, as we went over initially. However, there are no human randomized controlled trials on sarcosine supplementation and muscle, although sarcosine supplements are available. I'm mentioning supplementation from the top because almost no food has any appreciable amounts of sarcosine. So, like eggs, turkey, ham, legumes, steak have some but in tiny amounts that aren't worth bothering with. On the other hand, while there have been human randomized control trials using sarcosine, although they aren't in muscle outcomes, they are in psychiatric conditions. This is difficult to then carry over to what we've been discussing here. Plus, we don't know enough about the possible negatives of supplementation to really want to focus on it. That limits us a lot, but not completely, because your body produces sarcosine. It's probably the main, if not only, reason that sarcosine levels drop. So, could we potentially support sarcosine production? Well, possibly. Sarcosine is produced from glycine and a tagged methionine. These are both amino acids that we consume from protein sources. It can also be produced by removing a tag off of another nutrient called choline. I won't beat you over the head with the biochemistry, but is it possible that consuming sufficient amounts of these amino acids and choline could support sarcosine production in the body? Yeah, it's possible. I'm going to cover some more on this stuff for the insiders if you're interested. Now, I'm a bit hesitant here because we're making some assumptions and taking some leaps that I don't like to take. The reality is that you currently have a few options. One, supplement with sarcosine where the research is weak and we don't know the consequences. Number two, prioritize foods and protein sources that contain glycine, methionine, and choline with the hope that this might translate into greater sarcosine levels. I realize this isn't as solid as some other analyses that I've done, but I'm not a fan of extending beyond what we have, and this is what we currently have until further research releases. But honestly, when it comes down to it, I think I'd massively over-index on exercise over trying to op optimize sarcosine based on where the literature is, considering that we're discussing sarcopenia. The rewards will be many-fold greater. I really have to add that. So... We have some evidence that sarcosine levels are reduced in people with age-related muscle loss and strength called sarcopenia. We see that sarcosine leads to an anti-inflammatory profile while encouraging immune cells to infiltrate our tissues and reduce the inflammatory damage. It also helps in muscle regeneration and recovery. However, human evidence is limited and not muscle-focused, so we need more research before we can really jump into the whole supplementation area. Although, a few psychiatric studies have used supplementation. Another way to ensure sarcosine is to support its production in your body through sufficient glycine, methionine, and choline consumption. Deficiency likely would reduce sarcosine, but more of all beyond necessary intakes is unknown if it'll actually raise sarcosine more. Ultimately, this is exciting research, but it's early days. But there are more established ways of combating sarcopenia that are far less speculative right here. Thanks for nerding out with me.